Hello friends, Kishan is here again and welcome you in this video tutorial. In past few video series, we had discussed a lot of basic things in High 105. Uh, in this video tutorial, we are going to talk about the inheritance strategy in Hibernate. Uh, Hibernate is a ORM framework, right? And that's the reason Hibernate supports uh, uh, all the OOPS concepts, right? So one of the cool feature of uh, Java is uh, inheritance and Hibernate also supports inheritance. So if you have a more than one entity class and there is some inheritance relation between these entities classes then how Hibernate is going to behave, how Hibernate is going to create uh, tables for these related uh, entities that we are going to look in this video. So here let me show you. So this project is already I have created. I have given the name as default inheritance strategy. That means I'm not going to specify anywhere about the inheritance. And uh, just we want to check how Hibernate is going to uh, behave as default one, right? So if you look into the, my project, then first of all, we have a pom.xml, which there we have declared a dependency for MySQL connector and a dependency for uh, our a spring uh, sorry hibernate latest version that 5 to 11 so that's all about this pom.xml uh, we have uh, some helper class like utility, utility class and uh, this class is basically responsible to return us uh, hibernate session factory right so we have a factory method which basically returns a session factory so we can call this method by class name because this is a static so if you don't know how to create this class from scratch then you may watch my previous video tutorial there uh, I have written this class from scratch and I have added in this video tutorial one more uh, uh, static, uh, static method is called get date doj means date of joining or something like that so basically this this uh, basically helper class takes a uh, date in the string format and that returns into the date so that's all about this so you can specify you can send date your date in this format and this will return you the uh, con this will convert into the uh, java do java util date so that's that's a helper method now here uh, uh, Persian this is the uh, uh, topmost class or super class so here you can see we have a specified we have marked this class as an entity and we have specified the table name these things specifying this table name is optional if you do not specify then I want to create table uh, as a class name and uh, uh, one ID we have a, a declare over here, so that's the this is a primary key in this table, and what we are expecting, whatever properties we have declared over here, this things this property should be inherited by the uh, 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 subclass entity. So we have a two subclass entity. First is employee and second is a student. So here you can see this class is pretty straightforward. Uh, now this ID we want the auto generated. That's why a strategy we have selected as identity. So basically identity uh, hibernate basically uses auto increment facility of underlying database and that generates the id and we have a name we have restricted the length 100 and we have a gender and we have specified the length as 10. so that's all about this parent entity class now if you look into the employee then here also we have specified the table name right uh, for this entity and this is also a marked as an entity class and this is extending basically person class and and this guy is having uh, its own property but whatever property is available in the super class that is going to inherited by the uh, this uh, employee class as well of course you cannot inherit it directly because those fields are private but we have a public setters and creators so uh, so you can set values in those property and you can get from those properties we have a salary there we have a specify a uh, uh, column as salary and we have def specify one more attribute is column definition and there we have uh, we are applying decimal seven uh, comma two so what is the meaning of seven i have specified over here seven is the integral part so you can have a maximum seven digit, digit before a decimal and after decimal you have a two digits that's the meaning seven decimal means you can have a max seven decimal right so that's the meaning now date of joining we have a uh, we haven't we have specified the column name itself 
now this will take the time stamp right date time both now we have a data department name we have a bonus bonus we have a big decimal and that's the reason we have specified precision as well as scale so precision is nothing but the total number of digits right and three is the number of digits after the decimal that's the meaning of we have an email there we have specified the unique constraints and this is a subclass of person again we have a student which is again subclass of person there we have specified the table name and we have declared some properties and we have specified column names and as well as some constant like length as well so this is pretty straightforward right now very important is the client project here in this client project uh, we have created a session uh, now we have created one object for the person then we have created another object for employee and we are just setting its properties value we have created a third uh, third object for a student right and uh, here if you look into the employee i'm not setting value for here we are not uh, setting in this properties in this uh, entity class we are not setting values for id because id we are expecting auto generated right and employee and students will inherit uh, properties like id name gender from its super class entity that's the meaning right uh, and that's the reason in employee you can see we have seted a uh, gender so we are calling setter method of gender name but we are not setting the id id is in auto incremented right and uh, finally we are beginning the transaction we are saving this entity class reference and finally we are trying to commit the result and if you look into the hibernate cfg.xml then these classes i have registered as a entity class right this all classes will have to register over here these properties already i have explained if you do not know how what is the meaning of each and every property you may watch my previous video tutorial now i'm gonna run this project before running let's verify what's the database so database name is test so if you download this code from the git and uh, before running uh, on your local machine make sure that you have installed mysql and you will have a test database available and here there is uh, there may be uh, there it's maybe possible you will have a different uh, port number uh, mysql port number I, uh, my, my uh, for my sql port I have a specified 4406 you may be running on the default port like 3306 so these are the modification you will have to do before run this code on your machine so here let's see in this database we have no table as of now now I go and run this application and see how many tables are getting created in this case right so you can investigate the Eclipse console right so here Hibernate is gonna create a table uh, person underscore table and this table we had specified in the super class entity class now hibernate has added one more column is called d type this d type is nothing like a discriminator type and given the size as 31 and applied the constraint like not null so why hibernate has specific create added one extra column because in this uh, default uh, Hibernate default inheritance strategy Hibernate is going to create a single table and that's the reason Hibernate has added one extra column so that Hibernate will identify the column right which column is related to which entity class that's the reason now Hibernate has added ID gender name these three properties these three column name came from the super class entity now we have a bonus department number date of joining email salary these properties came from the uh, employee which is the uh, subclass of person right and finally we have a column which is coming from the a student right which is again a subclass of um, person class uh, finally id has defined as a primary key now hibernate uh, is basically trying to drop one constraint and again that is adding a constraint on the email so basically hbm2 ddl we have specified other as a update so when you specify hbm2 ddl as update then hibernate is gonna drop uh, this constraint right unique constraint every time and that will add a constraint again and that's the one of the changes i found in the hibernate 5 when we, but we, we are working on the previous version of hibernate like hybrid 4 or 3 then a hbm2 ddl value if you specify as a as a update then hibernate is not uh, gonna drop this constraint and again adding this constant this is not gonna happen this will happen only 
uh, when you specify the update then that will happen only in the first run and now ddl query is created right now hibernate has inserted one record into the database first so this record is inserted for the person and d type you can see is specified as a person and gender and name is whatever value we have set it that is getting inserted now again same table uh, one more insertion for the student right so you can see the d type as a student and third insertion for the employee right now if i go to the database and if i refresh it then you can see there is one table person but table name which we had specified in the subclasses which we are ignored but whatever column name and column constraint we have applied on in the subclasses those things are getting considered because this column name you can see that is created as per specify in the subclasses so what happens if you do not specify any kind of inheritance strategy then hyphen is gonna uh, follow single table strategy the hyphen will create a single table uh, which is a specify you know person class and that will add the num all property as a column which is coming from the super class uh, as well as sub class so here you can see first record d type is person id is one gender is female name is shudagama and rest of the properties which is not related to the person that's what hyphen has inserted null value now second is valid for the d type or discriminator type is student right a student record and that's what you are seeing whatever property which belongs to the student you will see value for them but rest of the for rest of the property that is showing as a null right now for employee records employee related information is there but for rest of the columns that is showing as a null so by looking into this table you can you can say this is in least normalized form right this, this table is not in normalized form so uh, there is a concept is called normalization in database so when you design a data when you go for the database, database design then what uh, what you do basically you do not uh, i mean dump all the data into a single table right rather you just uh, break the data into chunks different chunks and every chunk you are going to store into the uh, different tables and um, th there would be some primary key foreign key relationship so when once you insert the data and you later point of time if you retrieve the data uh, will try to retrieve the data then there is possibility your data uh, whatever desired data is available in the different tables so you might require some kind of joining to be performed right and th that's that's the reason uh, uh, normalization comes into the picture and that also helps you to uh, uh, to reduce the data redundancy right data duplication so this strategy of course does not fulfill the any kind of normalization this is in completely non normalization form right so and this is the basic uh, this is the default inheritance strategy in hibernate so that's all i wanted to cover in this video tutorial in next video tutorial i will do some modification in this code right some of the like uh, here you can see uh, this column name you can change column data type you can change these are the modification i'm gonna do in the next video tutorial and whatever value uh, is getting inserted into the d type those things of course we can uh, customize so those customization things we are going to look into the next video tutorial so in this video tutorial uh, we have learned our first inheritance strategy there are a couple of more inheritance strategies in hibernate that we are going to look into next few video series so thanks for watching this video and this code of course you can download from the github and github location i'm going to specify in the video description itself so thanks for watching this video and see you next video tutorial